Well, good morning, everybody, on day two of Domains 201. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Meredith. All right. So I hope yesterday was such a great day of conversation, so we want to keep that going on that side. Um, so this morning, we're going to talk about advanced site troubleshooting and tips and tricks for um, advanced errors within uh, your WordPress or Omeka sites, even general sites on your Domain of One's Own account as well. And um, through that, tips and tricks on um, site organization as well through a couple of different topics like um, error logging in WordPress um, and turning on errors in Omeka. Also, we're going to look at translating the messages themselves when we get the error messages. Um, sometimes it can be really daunting to see this long string of text within an error message and you don't know where to go from there. So we'll help you um, look through the errors and understand where the where the error is pointing to and what next steps we need to go, we need to take from there. Um, the 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 next steps can tur be turning off plugins, um, even switching themes in WordPress, um, or even updating themes and plugins in a site like Omeka or anything like that from there. We'll also take a look at file permissions. That, that a lot of times can cause the site to go offline um, for as simple as one file within your account being the wrong permissions. We'll talk through the um, WordPress config permissions that we permission changes that we've made to help make sure that the WordPress sites are a little bit more secure. Also changing default file permissions within your FTP client. A lot of times um, the file the file FTP client that you're working with like FileZilla or Cyberduck sets a default file permission that's different than what cPanel needs to be able to read the the the, the file or folder to load the site. So we want to make sure that we'll set those correctly as well as a um, admin file permission script that we have set up at the root of the server that lets you um, set up the, um, fix the permissions right off the bat to help make sure everything's on a clean slate for there. And then we'll also look at account organization to help prevent any errors in the future. So through subdomains and subdirectories on that side. So um, looking at the error logs themselves, we can look at um, WordPress in, in particular first. WordPress typically records errors within the error log file within the site directories themselves. This happens automatically, whether it be a PHP warning or a failed plugin update, anything like that. Um, if the site does go offline because of an error like this, WordPress also sends an email to the site administrator. So a lot of times um, it, it's pretty vague. So I'm sure all of us have seen, I got this email from WordPress. What does it mean? Sort of support ticket. So um, that means that there's an error um, reported in WordPress that caused the site to go offline temporarily. And it's recorded in the error log bold file within the, the site directory itself. Um, you can also choose to display the error on the site itself as a message, um, and, and you can change that within the WordPress config fi file directly. And I'll put in a resource here for um, changing that as well um, in Discord. So definitely keep the conversation there. Ask us questions as we're going. We'll be happy to take a look um, from there. On the flip side, um, another common um, application that we work with is Omeka Classic and Omeka S. And the these applications don't typically report error logs automatically. So you need to um, enable these within the HT access file. It's really handy to have if you're working on the site, like in a development mode, you can change that to report any errors if you're like making updates to plugins or um, anything like that. Otherwise, Omeka will just sh throw an error saying it encountered an error. Please enable. Here's instructions on how to do so. Um, and you can see on the right side, the bottom screenshot shows how you can change um, Omeka Classic to um, record errors themselves. Um, so this is also, um, once you're done troubleshooting the, the error or um, developing the site, you want to make sure you can delete or um, disable the error logging itself. 
Um, that way the site will continue to load properly. So it's helpful when it's turned on, but it won't um, let you load the site. It'll just keep displaying the errors completely on a, on a page. Uh, I have a question about that, Meredith. Yeah. Um, if you have resolved the errors, mm -hmm. um, would you continue to see the debug pop up on on the page? Is that that something that would just continue to open with like past errors or um, would it load the site normally? Yeah, are you talking about um, WordPress or Omeka? Omeka. Okay, it, yeah, in Omeka, the um, error log is only displayed once the page loads. It doesn't show like the full log um, and it doesn't log to um, the error log like WordPress would. So it only displays it on the page once you load. Like if you go to like a particular item or particular collection, it'll, it won't show the content. It'll just display the error message until you disable that in the HD access file. Even if the error has been resolved? Um, if the error has been resolved, then it, it won't um, actually show the show the error only when the error um, it occurs. So exactly. if you've like updated the plugin or anything that it's that it's referencing, then it should be fine. Still best practice to disable that when you're done. Though. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Totally. For sure. Um, OK, so now we'll take a look at interpreting the error itself. Um, so I've got a error message from November. Um, from a site that I've been working on, and it was a fatal error for PHP, which means that something broke the site and it's not loading anymore. This could happen. Um, you may see this may see a spike of, of these sort of errors when um, big updates happen. So if there's like a, a larger update to WordPress that your your plugins are out of date and they don't work with the latest version or even like a PHP jump. So like we saw this when we updated our default server version of PHP from 7.4 to 7 to 8.0 after 7.4 reached its end of life support. So we saw a lot of this with like older plugins. Um, so it's important to make sure that your plugins are up to date um, on that side. So you'll see a whole string of te text, um, typically like a fatal error, uncaught error for an undefined, undefined function here. Um, and then it shows a file path of where the error specifically was, was reported. Um, it looks very confusing in a lot of times like a different language, but the important part is to understand that the first portion of the error log in that bolded um, text means that's where the, the error lives. Um, so looking at this, it, it's showing home folder Meredith, which is my cPanel username, and then the website name. And then within WordPress, there's the, the plugins are held in the WP content folder under plugins. And then this one in particular was the Fusion Builder plugin, which is a page builder. Um, and there was one line within their class Fusion Builder library that threw an error. This was during an update. And luckily, I knew my um, knew how to disable plugins within WordPress to be able to um, roll back the version and then um, the site came back online from there. So um, once you know where the, the error lives, um, it's helpful at that point, then you can move into your troubleshooting steps um, to bring the site back online. Right, so like you might be asking, well, yeah, I know how to turn off plugins and, and themes. Um, I just do that from the WordPress dashboard, but the error message that Meredith showed you on the last slide is something that's actually in the error log. Um, but you may, and I'm sure that most, if not all of us have seen this, when you try to load a WordPress site and you get that error message splashed right across the page, um, that's when debugging is on so that you can kind of see that as you're trying to load the WordPress page, or you would see some sort of critical error um, notification, and that's when you'd be able to go back and check the error log itself for more details. Um, and so in that case, you really can't access the dashboard. Um, and so that's when you have to go to the file manager and work on things from there. So the first thing that we always like to do, especially if you follow Meredith's example of noticing that it's specifically telling you, hey, this is a plugin, 
based on the path, um, you'll want to try turning off those plugins from the file manager. And that is as easy as going into the file manager, following that path that the error message is showing you to, uh, to the affected plugin, if you know what that plugin is, and simply renaming it. Um, so just like double clicking or right clicking. And I like to do just like an underscore off so that I know which one I'm working with. Um, but it doesn't really matter what you name it as long as it's not the name of the plugin. Um, and then um, you can also disable a plugin um, through the WordPress uh, command line interface. And we have a, a command for that in um, a support doc that we can also link as well if you're more comfortable working in that platform. Um, and then once that is disabled, you can go back and see like if things are starting to load again. And if they are, then you know that that particular plugin is, is the issue and um, audit your plugins from there. Um, it's a great opportunity to <laughs> take, take a, a solid assessment of your plugins because sometimes you can forget about them um, if it's been a while and yeah. not realize that they're no longer being maintained. Yeah, absolutely. So within that PHP um, upgrade to 8.0, we got a lot of tickets about like my site's offline, plugins mm -hmm. are out of date. And it um, turned out that a lot of them have actually no longer have actually been removed from the repository itself. So they were no yeah. longer maintained. So I, I was seeing plugins like go back from 2013, even yeah. and even one from like 2010, which is like crazy that um, they were that out of date. So it's always it's definitely important to make sure you have like automatic updates on for for sites. Um, it's always helpful to keep those up to date. But also now we know how to turn off plugins if something does go wrong with those updates. Absolutely. So then if you uh, say needed to switch a theme in the database, if the error message is coming back and it's not necessarily pointing to a plugin, but it's pointing rather to a theme, um, then you'll want to address that not from inside the platform because you can't access it, um, but rather from um, the cPanel. And so from there, you'd want to be able to work in a database. So in the database, you know, you'd want to be able to know which database is specific to this particular site that you're using, which is something that you can find um, in Installatron. Um, and our support files take you through all of this. Um, so this is just a light overview. Um, and once you have that database uh, title name, then you'll go to the uh, to its options table. And then you'd be able to look for the specific fields of style sheet and template. And from there actually um, rename things to default. So like if you've got a funky theme that is throwing an issue, you can always go like to 2020. You know that that's a, a WordPress theme that, uh, or 2022, I guess, <laughs> um, that should be pretty solid and should set some defaults and if you can can make that work then you're in a, in a better in a better spot or at least you can start from there and uh, continue working yeah any of the default wordpress themes so 2020 through 2023 right now they can autom they'll automatically bring the site back online and let you troubleshoot the theme on that side, you may see your your CSS or any theme specific settings go away because obviously yeah. you're switching the themes. Um, but the other theme settings will re remain in the database on that side, and if needed, you can restore from a from a backup um, prior to the the theme update if needed to to make sure it comes back online for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, backups are your friend, and they're there for you when you need to uh, make these types of changes and experiment. So don't let that stop you. Um, so the final thing here is updating plugins and themes, um, not just in the WordPress repository, uh, but also in Omeka. So there's a big difference between the way that you do these update updates in WordPress versus in Omeka. WordPress has a very nice, lovely little um, updating <laughs> feature uh, platform interface. Uh, that makes that kind of updating quite simple. Um, Omeka, on the other hand, is a little bit more manual. And so 
this is where being familiar and comfortable in the file manager is really going to benefit you and being comfortable in your FTP client, if that's how you choose to, to work things. But essentially what you would be doing is actually going to uh, the Omeka site or uh, where, the, where the plugin or theme lives that you want on your site and actually physically downloading it and then uploading that via FTP or just via the file manager uh, to your site and then just configuring things from there. So it's more manual, it's not super complicated. And again, we do have support docs on this so that can walk you through. I think that the toughest part sometimes is just wrapping your head around that process of like, well, what am I actually doing? Uh, it's not just a click of the button. You have to understand the structure a little bit in order to get that to work. Absolutely. And I think that's also really helpful when you're kind of approaching troubleshooting itself is like even just updating plugins and themes within Omeka really helped me understand how to even troubleshoot to begin with. Um, understanding the file structure between um, WordPress too as well helped um, help gain the practice to like start um, interpreting those error messages and knowing, okay, this is, this is a particular plugin. And then you can also see like recurring themes happen within the errors too. Like maybe the, the kale theme in WordPress was not up to date fully and not compatible with the latest version of PHP. So a lot of times you'll see, see those errors for sure mm -hmm. from there. All right. So um, now we're going to take a look at file permissions themselves within cPanel. Um, this is important when working on sites because you want to make sure that you have secure enough permissions set up for your account so that your account's secure. Not everybody can execute a command on this particular file or even in the folder, um, but also enough that um, the site isn't only viewable to the owner of the account, um, which is yourself. So typically within cPanel itself, um, files should be at a 0644 permission. There's two groups within um, file permissions themselves. There's the owner and then others, which are um, visitors to the site and that sort of thing. So within the 0644 permissions, the owner can read, write, and execute the file itself and others can read and write, which means that they can visit the site and they can either post comments or um, any anything like that on the on the site itself, but they can't execute any commands or um, create additional files within the folder. Um, and folders themselves should be 0755, which means that the owner themselves can read, write, and execute as well and the others can read and execute. So that means loading um, images, um, themes, and that sort of thing. Um, recently, we did change the wp-config file um, for a um, more strict permissions on the, the site itself under 0400, which means that the owner is the only one that can execute um, the um, permissions itself. So similar to 644, it just has a little bit more stricter, a little bit stricter permissions on the file itself. Um, this way, um, like the limit login attempt, um, we can um, uh, limit like brute force attacks and that sort of thing. Um, so if you are working with like a caching plugin in particular, a lot of times this um, this a plugin like that will need to um, write to the WP config file. So you can temporarily change the permissions to 0644 if needed. That's definitely recommended. Um, and then make sure to switch it back to 0400 um, to make sure that everything's secure. We do have a script on the server that does automatically check for this permission across the board. So if it's not changed, not a big deal. It will get changed back to 0400. Um, but make sure to switch it um, on your end as well. And then you want to switch it to 0644, do the the installation of the of the um, caching plugin, and then change it back just so that way, like nothing, um, nothing is overwritten on that side. Um, we'll see that a lot with um, Super Cache or um, WP Rocket as well on that side. 
Um, for sure. Um, a lot of times we've seen um, FTP clients running into issues with um, file permissions themselves. They like to have their own specific default setups. Um, so the screenshot on the right is um, FileZilla and how to change the particular permissions within the FTP client itself. Um, so you want to make sure to set those 0644 and 0755 permissions unless specifically told otherwise for like a particular application. And those are typically documented within their um, setup pages and all of that good stuff. Um, if the site isn't loading, um, you want to make sure to check those permissions as well. Also the errors section in cPanel will let you know if there's a file permission error. Um, it will um, say something like client denied by server configuration on um, index.php or something like that. Um, it'll definitely let you know, like, particularly client denied by server configuration side leads to a file permissions. Um, and it can be kind of daunting to have to go through and individually change file permissions on that side um, for each folder and then su subsequently each file within your account. So as administrators, we set up a file permissions script. Um, I did not include the command itself, but um, I'll walk through the process and put the command in Discord as, as well. Um, you want to log into um, the uh, your root server um, through SSH, and then it's um, sh .fix per, or sh space fixperms.sh dash a and then the cPanel username. So you wanna copy and paste that into it. Dash A signifies that you wanna make changes to a particular account. And then once you run the commands, it'll go through each folder um, of the uh, account and then change permissions accordingly as needed. And you can make these changes because the account is the, is the owner of the files. So you won't run into any issues on that side, but if you do, let us know and we can always troubleshoot on that side for sure. So file permissions are always a good thing to look at when you're initially troubleshooting as well. Um, I go through the error logs and then into file permissions if needed. Um, so these, those two in tandem are typically the most common issues when loading sites. So um, it's always helpful to, to know those for sure. Yeah, and I mean, just from my experience as well, it has been, the issue has been file permissions, even when I have looked at the file permissions and not seen anything out of uh, the ordinary. And then I just think, you know what, I'm just going to run the script, doesn't hurt. Um, and then, boop, everything's back. So it's like permissions, it's always permissions. Yeah. It's not always permissions, but it's not a, it's not a bad thing to try if a file else is failing. Yeah, for sure. Um, I always joke it's either permissions or permalinks, and um, Chris and our infrastructure team will always say it's always permalinks um, <laughs> on that side. So, all right. Yeah, and the last thing we wanted to kind of touch on today is this idea of subdomains versus subdirectories or subfolders. Um, these can be kind of confusing for people, uh, so we wanted to kind of break it down a little bit and also help you understand um, what issues can pop up when you are working with one of these versus the other and in what scenarios you would want to rely on a subdomain versus a subfolder. So for subdirectories or subfolders, these are essentially multiple sites that are under one parent um, directory. So that's where you're seeing um, the domain name slash blog. Um, and some of you may have noticed that when you go to install a WordPress application, Installatron likes to just add blog to that um, optional directory field. Um, and so you have to remember to take that out if you just want something that is installed right on the uh, parent directory. Um, but that is a perfect example of that's, you know, how you would create a uh, subdirectory is through an, on that field in um, Installatron. You can do it in Installatron, but you can also do it from the file manager by just creating a folder within the public HTML folder. Um, so the, you know, we caution people when it comes to working with subdirectories because 
Um, there can be permalink errors that occur because of this. Um, anywhere that you're using a different application uh, that is built off of your parent, your, your primary domain, um, you're going to probably want to lean towards subdomains rather than subdirectories. Anything that relies on HT access rules should certainly be in a subdomain. Um, and I feel that subdomains kind of result in better organization um, than subdirectories. Sometimes you can run into some, you can really confuse your site by having a subdirectory, um, depending on what it's named. Uh, and then while you're, you know, working in the main site, those subdirectories can be created off of the main site and then conflict with um, maybe a subdirectory that you're creating manually. It can get very confusing. Um, and so you just want to consider that when working there. Um, but something that is, you know, a, a great scenario for this could be working with um, WordPress multi-site. That might be somewhere where you want to work with subdirectories rather than subdomains so that everything is, you know, clearly branching off of that main WordPress multi-site landing homepage. Um, and it could work very well for that. Um, and another great benefit to subdirectories is how easy they are to set up. So um, like I was saying, in Installatron in particular, you can just install an application without having to do anything ahead of time. You would just install the application and set up the subdirectory while you're installing it. Um, subdomains, on the other hand, uh, are take a little bit more planning. So you would have to actually set up the subdomain either in the file manager or from cPanel um, in the subdomain section ahead of time before installing an application to it. It really makes sites organized um, because these folders exist outside of that public HTML folder, um, which prevents these permalink errors from happening that we were discussing. And it really helps you isolate any additional errors to a specific site um, rather than getting things mixed up with that, that parent site because it really does live separately. Absolutely. Um, and it's important to note that the HD access file is hierarchical. I can't ever say that word, but yeah. it's hierarchical in the sense that the parent directory takes over if there's something wrong. So a lot of times if you're working with like say WordPress and you have a page like the, uh, like a portfolio page, but then you have like a static HTML site under the portfolio folder, um, the WordPress HT access is going to take over and try to load that page in particular. So then when you go to the portfolio folder on the static site, you may run into some, some of those permalink errors and permissions on that side yeah. for sure. So um, we're going to wrap up here. I've got a couple of resources, um, troubleshooting WordPress errors, um, common, we have a, a guide like that compiles all the, a lot of the common WordPress errors that we see, particularly file permissions and changing the default file permissions through your FTP client. And then subdomains versus subdirectories, which kind of dives in into more detail on the, the difference between the two. Um, and then um, some final thoughts on that side. Um, once you understand where the errors are reported within error logging, you can start to um, easily disable plugins and themes and really kind of understand like how the inner workings of the application starts to work. Um, 0644 and 0755 are your friends within file permissions except when you're working in the WP config file, um, which are going to be 0400. Um, so definitely make sure of those and that fix, fix permission script and um, subdomains over subdirectories typically with applications um, that rely on an HD access file um, helps you organize the account and isolates any other potential issues to the particular site itself rather than um, through the um, directories themselves. So. All right. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining the um, session on advanced site troubleshooting and let us know any questions in discord and we'll keep chatting throughout the day. See you, everyone. <laughs>